Hey everyone, today I'm going to be attempting cold welding. Let's turn off the vacuum and see if they lock together. So normally metals like this aluminum here are held together because there's a crystalline structure of positive metallic ions. And then there's a sea of negative electrons throughout it. And this creates a very strong bond that holds everything together. Now technically, if you were just to take some metallic ions and bring some other of the same metal close together, they would just get so close and then the electrostatic attraction uh, would pull them together just as if it were part of the same metallic structure altogether. So when I push these two pieces of aluminum together, they should stick together, but they don't. Now the reason they don't stick together is because I'm not actually pushing the aluminum together. I'm actually pushing two pieces of aluminum oxide together. So on the surface of this aluminum is a very thin layer of aluminum oxide that has reacted with the oxygen in the air. And so I can't actually get these metallic ions close enough together to actually form that electrostatic attraction to be pulled together into the same group. But if you're able to remove the air from between these so that there's no aluminum oxide, then if you just push them together, they should just weld together as if they were the same metal. And this is called cold welding. And it actually turned out to be a problem for a lot of early satellites that they built in space where there's a vacuum. In 1991, the Galileo spacecraft, which was sent to Jupiter to monitor Jupiter and then was going to be sent into its atmosphere, it deployed its high gain antenna. What was supposed to happen on this Galileo antenna is that when they released the holding mechanism for the antenna, it was supposed to pop out similar to an umbrella. But what happened is that it didn't pop out. It got stuck like this and it never really opened. Even though they had tested it a lot before, obviously before it was launched, they found that it never opened in space. After two years of researching this problem on Earth and trying to figure out what happened, they finally found out it was a series of unfortunate events. But one of the main causes was that they used titanium. And titanium reacts very quickly with air and forms titanium oxide. And it doesn't have the same coefficient of friction as pure titanium that doesn't have titanium oxide in it. So they didn't do enough tests in a vacuum when they were testing the release mechanism to know it would slide well. But when they did it in a vacuum, it didn't slide as well. So today I'm going to be trying to make cold welding happen in a vacuum. And then I'll be trying to actually make it happen in air with a specific type of metal called indium. Okay, so in order to do this, I have two pieces of gallium metal here. And gallium already doesn't form a lot of oxide on the surface, and so that won't be there. But there's still air in between these two metal crystals here. And so when I touch them together, they don't stick. But let's see what happens when I put them together in the vacuum chamber. Now I'll probably still need a little force on them. So I'm going to be using my large neodymium magnet here, and then my even larger neodymium magnet from below. Look how far away it affects it. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> so I don't want to let these two touch each other without this layer of acrylic between them. I'll never get them apart. So I'm going to be sticking this under it and I'll put my magnet on top and then I'm going to lift this up close to it. Oh my goodness. Okay but I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I want the magnet to stay on top of it. So it should happen a little bit more stable. Like that. And it should press them together in the vacuum chamber. Notice how they're not stuck to each other in the air after that. But now let's do it under vacuum. Okay, turn on the vacuum. Three, two, one. Okay, we've got a really good vacuum in there now. Okay, put some pressure on it for a bit. And leave it under the vacuum and see if we can get them to cold weld together. Okay, let's carefully take the magnet off. Easy. It 
It didn't stick. Okay, so that didn't work, but I think it's because I need to put a little bit more mechanical pressure on it and even turn them a little bit to wiggle them together and get the grooves to go into each other a little more. And so I'm going to actually vacuum bag them instead of using my vacuum chamber. So it'll put pressure on it from the atmosphere and then I'll also be able to press them together as well. So let's see if we can actually cold weld them together by vacuum backing them. Okay, they're vacuumed on top of each other. Okay, let's turn off the vacuum and see if they lock together. Uh, they look kind of stuck together. They're not slipping off. Let's open our bag here. <laughs> Look at that, <laughs> they're stuck together. We did it, cold welding. <laughs> cold welding in a vacuum. Look at that, two pieces of gallium stuck together. Without any application of heat here, we were able to cold weld these. Okay, let's see how hard they are to actually pull apart. Oh, they just came right apart. So they weren't actually bonded together very well, but on the surface there, they were bonded. So I can kind of feel them stick together in the air, but they were very easily able to come together and form a cold weld under the vacuum there. Now remember, gallium melts at 85 degrees Celsius, but I'm doing this experiment in well below 85 degrees Celsius. It's around 60 degrees in here, so it won't make the gallium melt at all. So, the ability for this to melt has nothing to do with the cold welding here. It's actually more to do with the ability to not form a gallium oxide on the surface. Now the cool thing about cold welding is you don't actually need a vacuum chamber to do it. There are some metals in which you can cause to cold weld together even in air. Now they have to be softer metals and they can't form a lot of oxides on the surface. Now one of these metals is called indium. Indium is an extremely soft metal. I have here two one ounce ingots of indium. These two pieces of indium ingots don't stick together at all, but if you actually put them together and give them a little twist, then they stick. On the very flat surface of it, if I just touch them together and set them on top of each other, they stick together. So weird. So they're not attracted to each other in any way. It's not like these are magnets or anything, but if you just bring those flat surfaces together, they stick. And if you give them a little twist, you can get them to cold weld together or gall together really strong, actually. So I almost can't get these apart. They're stuck. But if you do it to a dissimilar metal, because the crystal structures are different, it won't gall together or cold weld together. Now this is actually a form of cold welding. It's more related to something called galling. Galling is when you have enough frictional force between two metals that they can actually bond together. Now galling and cold welding are actually not separate phenomena, but they're actually kind of the same thing. Galling just takes place when you have a lot of friction in between the two metals, and it can even happen with regular metals like steel or aluminum. You can get it to happen pretty easily with indium because it's a lot softer metal. In fact, I have a previous video where I actually chewed indium like a stick of gum. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to my channel. And also if you haven't yet, hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out and turn on your YouTube notifications or the bell doesn't help. And also check out theactionlab.com to see my new Action Lab experiment boxes where you can do experiments similar to the ones that you see me do in my channel here. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.